Hello guys. So if you have a lot of photos and you are doing a presentation or doing your own YouTube channel for TikTok or Instagram, but if you're a beginner and you don't really want to spend so much money on these、um, templates for your presentation or your channel, simply watch this video. I'm going to show you five tips, very simple ones on how to make your photos look a little bit better with Final Cut Pro, of course. And you can always combine all of the five mentioned techniques and make it into one awesome video about your photos. Firstly, I'm gonna show you the easiest trick of all: panning. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. So maybe you can use what I use: go to crop and go to camburns. If you're using camburns, it can create a dynamic flow to your static photo. So this is the default one. So it starts with this and zoom out. So I'm not going to go here as the default one. So I'm just gonna click this button over here. So it's gonna zoom in to to this gorgeous Lamborghini SV. Yep. And I'm gonna click down and let's play. So as you can see, it's zooming in, and since it's a little bit slow, so maybe you can just. Cut it to say one second, so it's gonna zoom in a lot faster. And if you want to end here and make it stay over here, you can go to the last frame a little bit forward, like a frame or two, and press Option plus F to create this freeze frame. So it's kind of zooming in and it stays there. There's a couple of modes you can choose actually. So yep. By right-clicking, you can choose to ease in, ease out, linear, ease in and out. So I'm gonna choose ease out, ease out first, and drag it a little bit longer to so you can see the effect. I'm gonna hit done, and yep, there's a slowly easing in kind of effect. It's not very obvious, but yeah, you get a gist of it. The second way to do it is just to go to conventional keyframing. The good thing about a conventional keyframing is that it allows more room for creativity. So I'm gonna suggest that you hit right-click on this clip and choose Show Video Animations, so all the keyframings will be shown. And then let's go back to the start. Hit a keyframe button over here at the start for position and maybe rotation and scale. And yep. So if you are gonna zoom in, just gonna move over here and then scale in and change the x axis. And then if you wanna create a little bit of like a fast zoom, or maybe it's like kind of a speed ramping. So I'm gonna just、mm, zoom in further here, like this, and then bring it down and. I'm gonna shift this knots over here, so this is kind of like a speed ramping. And then, since it's a very short clip, I'm not gonna do a very drastic one because it's not that long. And then once you hit play, yep, it's kind of like this. But yeah, it, it takes work if you want to. Just to have the best overall result, and it's not as easy as Camburns. So if you're running short of time, I suggest you use Camburns. If not, you need to do a lot of adjustments to make these transitions smoother, to avoid those sharp and abrupt, you know, rotations of these. Yep, you can see there's a little bit of like a rotation, and this is the end of the first technique. For the second technique. It actually requires you to have some LUTs installed. There are a lot of free LUTs around in the market, or I mean, in YouTube, you can search them, or you can actually buy them if you want to have some more fancier, cinematic, great kind of LUT. And I've installed kind of like 700 over LUTs, and I've created some of my own. And then I'm just gonna go to the effects column, effects tab over here. And search custom, and then drag the custom LUT over here on the picture itself, and over here on the inspector. As you can see, you can choose the LUTs. 
So for example, I already chosen some of the LEDs previously. So I'm gonna choose this one. If I don't really like this, I can always change to another one. Or maybe yeah, another one. And yeah, there are a lot of different vibes and lots and those different looks you can create and you can turn down the mix to lessen and you can even add a few more lots on this to create sort of like a layering effect and sometimes this really helps for your photo or your presentation to create those and for those of you who are not very familiar with Photoshop, Lightroom and stuff like that, you can always use your Final Cut Pro to edit your photo to make it much, much nicer. And always you can come to the color corrections, color ball, color wheels, color curves, saturation hue, everything. And yeah, you adjust it like a normal video and color reading. Okay, the third tip is using transitions. So basically you treat your uh, I mean your photos or pictures as normal video clip and you can add in transitions so I've installed a lot of transitions and I think some of them are actually very very good at I don't know bring out those crazily good effects so I'm gonna use optic zoom yep and I think this is cool I'm gonna hit play and boom yep and it's adjustable you can reverse the zoom or shorten the zoom and boom yep this creates a lot of dynamic kind of thing when you're changing your photos and you can add in different transitions if you want let's try another transition and just hit play Wow, yep, you get my idea. So I have to make a video of creating your own chromatic zoom transitions and normal zoom transitions. And yep, you can check it out and create your own zoom or chromatic zoom transitions on your photos without purchasing any expensive transition plugin. And for the fourth tip is using titles. And very simple basic titles will do, you don't really have to purchase all those expensive, I don't know, dynamic titles. But if you already purchased them, it's good. But if you don't have any of this installed, let's try with the basic titles. So I'm gonna use Ctrl T and create a basic title, cut it and to make it a shorter one, and change the content of the title to maybe up. Yeah. So basically for me, I can always use the titles uh, to create those like glitchy effects and stuff like that to my video. Uh, so the most simple one is to cut them into pieces and create those like flickering effect and I have shown many times across different videos. Yep, so I'm gonna show you a really quick one. So let me... Uh, yep, and I'm gonna hide or unuse or delete some of them. So this create a flickering effect. This is the first way to create a dynamic uh, flow to your photo. And obviously you can use effects such as prism as well as that TV. So layering them up and then you can always come to the inspector and change the levels so for this one change to tv static decrease the amount and for this one you can always uh, add a keyframe at the angle and then in the middle you can change and yeah accordingly change accordingly yeah like this so this create sort of an effect like this yep something like that and it's kind of cool and you can even just copy and paste it again and yep and at the end replicate this one and let's see
Yep, and you can combine the, your panned tannic. So, can burns and change the start to the end. Something like that. And create sort of like a dynamic flow to the photo. And hit done. And something like that. Yep, yep. And for the last technique, it's actually masking like a very simple uh, shape masking. So, for example, this is me. I'm staring into this direction, and uh, this is me. This is my, actually my thumbnail of uh, one of my video. If you are interested, you can check it out. And then I'm gonna combine the two of the photos together. So let me just change this a little bit to the left, and uh, yeah, this to the right. Hold on a second. Yep, something like that, actually. And then I can always go to the effects tab and type mask and choose a shape mask or vignette mask of any kind. Yeah, actually, it doesn't really matter for this case for simplicity. I'm gonna just choose shape mask and yeah, something like that. Yeah, you get what I mean. And then I'm gonna drag shape mask as well. Here, yeah. And for this one, I'm gonna increase it as well. And uh, to decrease the feather, like this. Something like this. So this is sort of combined two photos together. So for okay, let me just create a compound clip first. So this is like sort of combined both the photos together. And if you're trying to create this effect of me staring to another me looking in front at a camera, yeah. And, and this one is not adjusted for the skin tone, and this one is adjusted, so maybe I'm kind of pointing to the adjusted skin tones of me. So, yeah, you get a gist of it. This is the simplest way of using mask on your photos and you don't have to use Photoshop and you can actually adjust them and individually on the inspector and yeah since I don't really have a lot of time I won't go into the details of how you can do a pattern masking of course and if you have any questions please do not hesitate to contact me by dropping a comment or anything or send me an email I don't know but that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you next time, bye bye!